Welcome to Harry Potter and the Anxious Millennials, a show where we delve week by week into each chapter of the Harry Potter series. We need to do the thing one time where we just sit and we're like... Khaleesi, you ruined it! Khaleesi, you (laughs) ruined it! Welcome and welcome back to week uh, 14 of this this book. Um, It's the 14th week. Wait, 14th week? Yeah, Isn't it chapter? This is the 14th chapter. This Isn't chapter it chapter? 14, girl. Oh, okay, sorry. In my, for some reason on my... Oh, no, it's 16. We're recording yeah. 16. I was like, I'm chapter editing, 16. I'm in the middle of editing 14. Oh, okay, Excuse yeah, because I was like, I thought maybe my audiobook just had it labeled wrong, but I was like, let me check. <laughs> Shit, can you imagine if I had read the wrong chapter? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm ready to go. I've got so many notes about the wrong chapter. <laughs> um, welcome and welcome back. We are in the 16th week of a 37 chapter weekly series on Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. News joining to us today, everyone. Joining us today, we have co-host of this very podcast that you're listening to, Ari. Say hello. Hello, Adam. Thank you for having me today. Really glad to be oh, here. Such a, it's such a pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, we're just going to get right into Where's it. This? Ari, take it away. I don't know this person, guys. I don't know this. I don't know this Adam from Adam. <laughs> you know what? I didn't plan a uh, a little summary one sentence summary of this chapter but i actually don't think i'm going to do that because this is the title chapter everyone the title yeah. chapter of the book this it's the book. goblet of fire in the goblet of fire she's here uh she and has we arrived use her fully I this was just going to say, I have a note. I was like, she's here, and then she uh, completes her mission, and then that's yeah. it. She is a one and done. She's here. She's, she's a cameo she's performance. Done. Yes. Yeah. This chapter you haven't starts. You this in the other books, right? No, Chamber of Secrets. There, was, there right? was one called the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, yeah, I guess there was one. I mean, there had there definitely to have been. Wasn't, there was definitely not one called the Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> no. And I don't think there was a Sorcerer's Stone. I don't think because yeah, they, they would have also changed the title of the chapter name as well. Yeah. I can't remember about the first book, to be honest. Was there? A it seems or like something? three and a half years ago. I don't know. I It, could, it almost literally. Might have been. I, I don't know. And it was such a short book that I'm like. Madame <laughs> Hooch was a character. We'll never hear from her again. <laughs> Right, Nicol- Nicholas Flamel existed in in uh, chit chat. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't know anything about him. Um, well, anyway, you know, back to the present, or at least present for us. Uh, chapter sixteen starts off with all of the Hogwarts students completely shitting themselves because Victor Crumb has just arrived. The uh, Victor Crumb. The Victor Crumb. Adam is among them. Everyone. <laughs> Adam is Vi- thrilled. <laughs> Victor the Crumb. Meg <laughs> the Stallion. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Victor. Victor the Crumb. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yes, Victor the Crumb. There's a, a couple girls who are trying to uh, get lipstick for him to sign their hat. And I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> I just don't like that choice. <laughs> I just am not a fan. Um, but I do like Hermione saying, now really. <laughs> um Hermione was so annoyed for most of this chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, what else is new? Uh Ron also wants an autograph, though. He's very excited. Um, and then they head into the Great Hall, and the Bobatons students have chosen to sit with Ravenclaw. And then Ron is hoping that the Durmstrang boys and gals are going to come over and sit with them. Could but you they imagine? With the that Slytherin? would be so wild if that had happened. And they sat with the Gryffindors. Yeah, <laughs> just, just right knowing next to who Ron. Karkaroff if <laughs> Karkaroff is if um, Karkaroff if Karkaroff, Karkaroff if. if um. Carker off or Carker on? I'm never gonna let it die. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. 
Uh, he's Karkaroff. Off, honey. Off. No one is turned uh, on by that. Karkaroff or Karkaron, more like Karker standby. Okay. <laughs> The joke, the joke found within a joke. Uh, <clears throat> so he, the Durmstrang kids sit down with um, the Slytherins, and then Malfoy leans over to him, which Ron's like, "I bet he can see what, right through you." Uh, what do you? <laughs> what do you? So what, what do you think that Malfoy said to Crumb and Adam? What would you have said to Crumb? In this um, I think we said the same things. I think what he said was. If you meet me in the dungeons after the meal, I will give you the best head you've ever received in your entire life. Besos. I thought you were going to say, if you want to slither on in here. Oh, no need for that. We'll go <laughs> get right to the point. How big is it? <laughs> Victor the crumb. Let's hope it's not a crumb down there, honey. I'm sorry. Honey. <laughs> Victor the Crumb, more like Victor no. better come. We okay? need to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I encourage that. That's on me. My mom is like violently <laughs> fast forwarding right now. <laughs> hey, Nan. Thank you for being an avid listener of the pod. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Ron is like, well, what if, uh, what if they need a place to sleep? I wouldn't mind keeping on a camp bed and then he can have my bed. And I was like, Ron. Are you really going to be sleeping in another bed? You don't want a spoon crumb. And again, I was like, Adam. They're sleeping like, on the I'm... boat, right? Yeah, they're sleeping on the boat. But Ron okay. doesn't know that yet. So he's just like, right, 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 actually, right. there's multiple times in this chapter where Ron's like, where are they sleeping? And I'm like, Ron, you are very concerned, very concerned about where everyone is laying their head down at night. But yeah. okay. It's, uh, it's it's visiting the re-theming of like multiple times already in this book, there's been like people are sleeping in weird places. At the borough, people were sleeping in rooms they don't normally sleep in. We had the sleeping right. situation at the camp. Like we're all kinds of sleeping conundrums in this book. I guess it's like his, I know, she, I'm sure she's using him as, so if we have the question, if the reader has the question of like, well, where are they sleeping? It's answered for us. But I was like, it's just the fact that it's Ron every time. I was a little like. Yeah. You want you want to sleep with Crumb. You also want to slither on into Floor's bedroom. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> It's on, frustrating bro. that the movies makes Ron an idiot. Obviously, that's not something we love about the movies. But it's also not not textually supported. Like oh well in this book it really starts yeah yeah which I want to talk about they that just a cut bit, out but... the other half of Ron's character in the movies <laughs> yeah because I feel like sometimes Ron can be a bit slow on the on the uptake but like yeah. I don't know. I mean, know. to be <laughs> fair, the, th these books and movies, they're not called Ron Weasley and the fill in the blank. Okay. No, I know, it's but Harry. it's almost like in the in the in the film, he very much was made to be like the more of like the comedic relief, kind of like the for stooge. Sure. And it just he's not really written that way ever. I mean, from the beginning, I just don't think he's really written that way. In this chapter, he, or in this chapter, he, in this book, he's the most like I think Ron gets the kind most one-liners in the series. Yeah. Across all the books. I think he's in the, the one that gets to like yeah. end the like scenes in the chapters and be like, well, comment here. Yeah. So maybe that's probably just what they were pulling from for that first movie. And yeah. then we're like, well, it worked. We found a kid who can do it. And seems like, to be enjoying it. It Audiences was really love it. It was really born with the spiders bit in the second film right which to be fair when that film came out i thought it was hilarious so yeah uh the Durmstrang students are really impressed by hogwarts but the bobaton students are not as impressed because you know bobaton is in like a french <laughs> chateau uh, yeah, like yeah. a like literally on the loire valley there is Has no hiding be. it Bobaton Can you put a, so, Adam, please put a picture 
right here. Oh, I, ha- I have a plethora to choose from. Yeah. I'll choose Chanel So. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I was like, Adam's going to yeah. know all the spots that <laughs> Bobatons could be located because I don't. I know nothing about French. But stuff. also, Bobatons very gives me very like they're not trying to hide that they're magic. Like they're like giving tours to the public, and they're oh, like, oh, absolutely. It's like, yeah. There's definitely like closed doors that the tourists shouldn't go into, but sometimes right. they'll leave it cracked just in case someone sees, just so <laughs> they can show off a little bit. Very French in that way. And is it? I was gonna in, in terms of the, in terms of French custom. So all the, in my notes, I just have BB for Bobatons and DS for Dermstrang. So mm-hmm. all the BBs stood up when Madame Maxine came in. Madame Maxime came in. I is that normal? I don't know. I have no I idea. Like, I I do love that. Like they love her. I I I do think that's like a really literally funny thing. Like, that like. <laughs> love the idea of like (laughs) yeah immediately at attention i was like oh okay i love that um i feel like it's more of her being like if i walk into a room we're all better stand yeah (laughs) she was like did you hear that who Someone on that? their motorbike, a motor, a motorcycle, Mo- a motorbike. Hagrid, Most serious? Hagrid, yeah, one of them. Uh, so yeah, they all stand up for Madame Maxine. That's very kind of them. Uh, and then Dumbledore welcomes them, and a girl in a muffler gives a derisive laugh when he mentions that they'll have a good year here. And I was like. really did that i don't know i mean i don't like dislike fleur but i was like that's an interesting choice i i think it's very i mean she's just doing like french stereotypes that's yeah, literally all she's right. doing i thought it was a little one. stereotypical i was like mm. she's just being like oh the french are so into themselves yeah yeah like she fleur is just a snob supposedly which obviously we find out is not true but right. i was like mm, i don't know i guess maybe she's a little She's a little particular, though, I would say. Very weird to think how horny Ron is for Fleur when later in this book series he be- is her brother-in-law. So that's weird to think about. Yeah. Everyone eats the gorgeous dinner that the house elves have prepared. She made sure that J.K. Rowling made sure to mention that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam, what is bouillabaisse? Bouillabaisse is, is bouillabaisse. like a seafood stew. Oh, so um, I would probably like it. It's I like seafood. Fucking delicious. We had it when we went on our honeymoon. We were in um Marseille on the coast and like literally every cafe or like every bistro on the waterfront like they're they ha- they like have a sign that says like the best bouillabaisse in Marseille. <laughs> I swear to god. This so is really, the one. It's you here. You can just pick any of them. It's really funny cuz bouillabaisse kind of isn't hard like it's just like it's just like stock and a shit ton of seafood Mm. and like gorgeous herbs for like uh aromatics like okay it's it's just so simple that's why it's so good um so i was very jealous that they got to eat booyabas at hogwarts and i thought it was wild that rod was like (laughs) i'm good thanks and i was like okay what we're not gonna do is have the english person be like um my food's far superior girl have you eaten english food he literally was like no thanks and then had black pudding girl Girl, you had to colonize the globe to find spices and you still did not know what to do with them what are we doing (laughs) say that (laughs) have you seen have you seen they just opened a popeyes in london for the first time yeah and all these british people people are like it's so spicy (laughs) I haven't told Michael that. I'll need to tell him because Michael loves spicy food. What are they talking about? Indian food is like the main cuisine of choice over there. And Indian food, it's very spicy. Yeah. What are Indian they talking food, about? The best Indian food you can find outside of India is obviously in London. Yeah. We, we actually do have a true. really good, we found a really good Indian place here. The next time you and RJ come, we should go. Uh, but yeah, you don't I don't get it that often, but I love Indian food when I do. Yeah. Have it. I'm like, Ugh, it's so good. You have to find a, a good spot for sure. And we found one. It's really good. But yeah, I made a note about that, that I was like, first off, what is bully bays? And then the nerve. So, so, and now I'm even more mad because that sounds delicious to me. 
And Ron's so like, no thanks. And then grabs the black pudding. Black pudding. Congealed bl- blood pudding. Like, and, and I said this to Michael because I was listening to the chapter out loud. And Michael was like, I like black pudding. And I was like, of course you do. <laughs> I mean, of course you do. I mean, RJ likes like a dinaguan, which is like a congealed blood, like Filipino dish. So like if you grow up with it, sure. And you don't have the understanding of what it was. Like I like to eat liver paste because I just like ate it young. And so I like think it's good. But I think now if someone told me you're eating like a liver, I'd be like, I'm actually really okay. Yeah, Michael Um, likes liver too. I don't What's the weirdest thing I eat? I don't know. I mean, probably people think it's weird to eat like fish vegetables. Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> people think weirdo. it's weird to eat like fish eggs. Oh no, people probably think it's weird that I love pickles so much. People is an Adam. <laughs> I'm on the pickle train. I never say no to oh, pickles are- anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Welcome. <clears throat> uh the Durmstrang students, they wear deep red robes. So we've got the Bobaton students in their like powder blue sky blue cute they're Very, giving silk, me very the like yeah it's giving me like flight attendant like yeah, air france isn't that's it? what it's giving me yeah yeah and then there were the durham strength students with their deep red robes interesting Crimson. interesting choice yeah i was like oh okay because i think they're brown in the film they're not red. they wear those red robes to the ball but that's about it or like the red like almost more like military style jackets to the ball yes they definitely were red to the ball i'm trying to think of like the in the when they walk in huh. br- they're brown huh. they're brown yeah <laughs> which like huh. what is that can we talk about it we have to wait till we get to the film <laughs> I know. the film is gonna be four episodes long yeah, everybody it's, and it's just gonna be us shitting on it <laughs> <laughs> adam we both need to like drink like may- maybe we'll make like a drinking game to the film yeah, we'll pass away we by the to. end of the film. <laughs> we have to. When Take a drink anytime you see something you don't like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every time someone with long hair pops up on screen. on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Hagrid shows up to the dinner and his fingers are all bandaged because of the scroots. Which, like, Hagrid, get rid of them. No. What are we doing? I can't believe... Okay, what's crazy is, like, in book two, she kept referencing the mandrakes, but it comes back yeah. later. The Scroots do nothing in this book. Nothing. I think yeah. there's a Scroot in the maze. I think that's the only thing yeah, that comes there's back. A, there's a giant Scroot in the maze, so I guess that... But we have to the keep payoff. referencing it for this reason. <laughs> That was the I payoff. Don't care. I know. The Scroots, every I don't... every chapter since we have gotten to Hogwarts has talked about Scroots. And I'm like, we have to move on. I almost feel like we don't even need it to because we get so much of Hagrid in this book. Which I also I'm not think even we gonna do. go into That's that true. yet. But I agree we, with we that already too. get so much of him. So I we also don't, don't think he's this. giving a well-rounded care of magical creatures education if you're doing one full year on one animal. That you can't even control or like know how to feed or like, like it just seems like, wouldn't that, would that even be fun for him? I feel like the answer is no. It's weird. I don't like the Scroots bit. And um, like, what are the other, what are the other years studying? Is it just the fourth years dealing with the scroots or like is everybody everyone, just everyone studying the scroots? So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Uh so after they, you know, wave to Hagrid across the table, then Fleur. Who but Fleur de la Cour? Do we know her name? Not at this point. Not yet. A, not a yet. Beaut- a beautiful nameless woman. No, not can't even say a woman. A beautiful nameless 17-year-old girl. Shows yeah. up and Ron can't even function, which I was I think like, we can, I think we can say woman because they in 17, that's, that's yeah, legal for okay, yeah. okay, 17 year old woman by wizarding world standards, right? Shows up and Ron can't even think straight. Uh, and so then, honey, <laughs> same, <laughs> but about crumb, 
This is this is yeah, what yeah. happens to you when crumb comes back. Yeah, yeah. So I understand. Okay. I'm like trying to figure out where to start with this. I understand because of the fact that Harry is like the chosen one. We have said this before that like she, so that's why. Are we supposed to believe that's the only reason though? Because Harry was affected by the, by the Vila. And so it's just really weird to me that like, there's no mention of Harry feeling kind of dazed too. Like he almost has well, no problem talking to her. And I was like, but it isn't, this is supposed to be a universal thing. If we're well, going okay, with so what she said, Harry's by is what I'm figuring <laughs> out. But still, or that I think it's just that, like, because she's half or quarter is it quarter? Her grandma's Avila. Yeah, her grandmother. Which so her she's quarter. But how did that what a, happen? What a, we can't even get into it. So, um, <laughs> but like, this, I think the question thing about the Vila situation and the giant situation in this. Both don't make sense to me. And we'll, I'm not going to get into it now, but I will take a moment to get into it later. Because she just... I just... as a, And this is like something we're going to harp on until the end of this fucking podcast. So if you don't like to hear it, just unsubscribe <laughs> and leave forever. She can't write a female character to save her goddamn life. And it's so no. frustrating. <sighs> There's Fleur like an is ish- like it's both the both the female characters that she introduces all three let's let's include Cho because Cho actually gets like fully introduced in this book. Great, all three characters that she introduces: Madame Maxime, Fleur Delacour, and Cho Chang are all just about the object of desire of men. Yes, and it's crazy that that is all she's. Oh no, Rita Skeeter also gets introduced, but she's a bitch. Yeah, yeah, no, exa- cool. the other, I was going to say. And Winky's, and Winky's a house elf. Yeah, and, and Winky, the drunk. Um, just, yeah, and it's all about whenever she talks about these characters, bummer. I feel it's like so much revolves around their physical description or physical appearance. Like, all we know about Cho at this point is that, like, she's a pretty Asian girl that plays on the Quidditch team. Yeah, she's a Fleur speaker, yeah. is a, a very pretty girl who's who made boys' heads turn. And then Madame Maxime, she it's just described her body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like she just described her body. It's just so much uh, I don't yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Oh, yeah, it's bad. It's not like she was I like, don't like it. Victor Crumb had rippling well, he doesn't in this in the book. <laughs> But even Cedric, I mean, she's like, he was handsome, but like, she doesn't really go into no, like she, she doesn't she's go not into like it at all. His strong, jutting jawline and his muscular shoulders. Like, girl, give me some of that. But is Hello? it because, is it because <laughs> Let's it's go. kind of from Harry's, but it's not really Harry's point of view because it is a narrator who's like third party of objectively saying what's happening it's just yeah. the only thoughts we can hear are harry i don't know i don't love it um i love floor as a character and i love madame maxime as a character yeah. and i love cho chang as a character um it's just frustrating it's just frustrating i Re-reading. think the thing the thing that happens with fleur that it's always hard to explain this from like an an uh a character development standpoint and so i'll try to just like simplify it as much as i can by saying this, a character mm-hmm. can be beautiful and other things. It's almost like if a character yeah. is beautiful, that is it. And there is nothing else that can be said about them or anything else that you that is worth mentioning because uh, but they're just so beautiful that that's all we talk about. And I will right. would like to make the point that this never happens to male characters. It is only that's female true. characters that this is done to. So that's the last I'll say on it, but that's the main thing with Fleur's whole story that is so annoying to me. The most attractive male character so far we've had in this book series is supposedly Gilderoy Lockhart, but his actual Mm -hmm. story was that he was like a liar and a con artist. Right. Right. And It wasn't just that he was attractive. Yeah. And Cedric, I feel like they do a good job of like giving him a whole thing 
a whole yeah. story and a whole like we get to know him and he's humanized and all of that. We don't ever get that with Fleur. She's literally just there to like kiss Harry and Ron. Literally. She is. Yeah. That's like the big highlight with her is that they get kissed by her. Yeah. Boo. Boo. I don't like it. And uh, she's the worst Hogwarts. No, you know what? We can't even get into that yet. Yeah, we're wait, gonna wait get till we get it. to that part. But we're uh and so then and then also on that note, in terms of the just the whole flur of it all, then there was like this weird conversation where Ron was like, they don't make girls like that at Hogwarts. And Harry was like, they make them okay at Hogwarts. And I was like, no, don't do this. I don't like this. I was just like, this is and Hermione's there. Hermione's there the whole time. And I'm like, this is I'm so uncomfortable. Not a fan, not a fan. And all it's all written by a woman, which is the weirdest part to me. Yeah. It's so weird. Okay, I'm not going to – we're going to move on. <laughs> so right – unless did you want to say something? I can't tell if you're thinking. No. No, I just <laughs> – the only thing I was going to say was that because I think she's 25% Vila or whatever, like maybe that's why not everybody in Hogwarts is like <gasps> – it's like people who are – more easily but then like what does that mean like more more woman more of a womanizer like or just like straight like on the kinsey scale you're yeah, on the kinsey more scale. actual <laughs> heterosexual i don't know whatever it's stupid it again, doesn't matter what if you are a bisexual woman are you like oh hey girl like what happens <sighs> our, is Ad, our adam our, our adam and i like kind of like, yes, Queen Slay, like just slightly. What's yeah. happening? Am I like doing a full because I'm in the closet? So I'm fully like, ooh, a wooga, <laughs> a wooga. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, and then right after the the floor interaction, Crouch and Bagman arrive at the at the professor's table. Teacher's table? Adult table. What? The head the head table? Head table. Okay. I couldn't I didn't make a note of what it was called. I just wrote teacher's table. <laughs> the head table. <laughs> <laughs> teacher's table, adults table, same the thing. Staff, the staff room. Yeah, the the staff yeah table. teacher's lounge. The teacher's yeah. lounge. <laughs> um the okay, admin so, desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um and they're, first off, I feel like this is pretty obvious, right? They were like, what are they doing here? Obviously, they're here because they're organizing this. Do you think, this is me being annoying, do you think they really would have planned for both the Wizarding World Cup and the Tri-Wizard Tournament to happen, <laughs> like, within weeks of each other? Um, That's a good point. Do you know point. what I mean? Like, I think that's a yeah. lot of planning for, like... They could have easily been like, oh, we can Move bring the Travis Tournament back. We already know that we're going to do the World Cup, so let's do it the fall, like, next year. Yeah. Seems weird to me. This is why B Ludo Bagman is so is so busy. He can't worry about Bertha Jorkins. He's too busy. Yeah. Leave Ludo alone. This is It'd a be yeah, like, very busy you, season for them. Yeah, it would be like, do you want to um, host the the Summer Olympics, but then also like two weeks later, do you want to host the World Cup as well? <laughs> no, nobody real. wants to it's do so that. Weird. It, it's so weird that it's literally back to back. Like, yeah. you're not kidding when you say back to back. Uh, so we learn the full names of Bartimus. Bartimus Crouch, and I'm going to go out on a ledge here and say that that means Ludo's full name is Ludacris Bagman. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> Bartimus? Bart Bartimius? I think it's Bartimius. Bartimius yeah. Crouch and Ludacris Bagman. <laughs> you yeah. heard it here first. Um, so they're there. Ludo. They're there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ludo. Uh, and then Dumbledore is like, okay, let's get the show on the road on the road, and then asks Filch to bring up a casket. Is this what it said in your book? Yes. And I was like, 
we about to pay our respects to like a fallen champion? Where is this going? Not really, because I remember that didn't happen. But I was like, a casket? And, and then I asked Michael. Because the chapter name is called The Goblet of Fire. Yes. And I was like, do you call a chest or like a trunk a casket? And he was like, yeah. It's not just a coffin, if that's what you're thinking. And I was like, 100%, that is what I'm thinking. Yeah. We only call a coffin yeah. a casket. Yeah. So, but he's talking about a chest with the goblet of fire. Yeah. And then he, he announces means a shipping crate. That's what he means. <laughs> the shipping container just arrived. Yeah. Uh, and then he shares that there will be three tasks spread out throughout the year. Three, one, two, three. And the impartial selector is the Goblet of Fire herself. She has arrived. She's here. Mm -hmm. I did not remember that she was a wooden goblet. I fully, the the movie took over, took like fully over in my mind. And I was like, oh, it's like that silver, metal, iron, whatever. And then just blue flame. But it was like wooden. And so... You only see the yeah. blue flame coming out the top. I it's guess I like I didn't think of the movie. I thought of the the chapter illustration where it's just that like cup. Oh, in the yeah here. Um, and f- yeah, to me yeah, it, it is, looked it is like wooden. It, yeah. It look, see, when I looked at it as a kid, I never thought it was wooden. I always thought it looked um like it was made of stone. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it's like a gray. Yeah. cartoon drawing so valid yeah so that's what she looks like she's a wooden gal i didn't know sorry miss goblet uh and then basically he said dumbledore says this the student must put their name and school on the piece of paper isn't this a whole issue Isn't this the whole issue? Because, correct me if I am wrong, but the way that, I'm I'm spoiling everything. Harry is selected because- What? (laughs) So-and-so, so-and-so put in his name under another school. But Dumbledore is saying to write down the name of the school on the thing. So when it would have come out, wouldn't it said like Harry Potter Clay Magnet High School? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, why? Then that would have been so obvious. Like, I just was like, wait, I had a really big bump moment with that. I was like, wait. I I don't remember what we learn at the end of the book. So we'll have to like put this on hold. I don't I don't disbelieve you. I just want to see what the like text is when we get there. No, I didn't feel like you were saying that at all. I just am like. There's no way. Obviously, in the movie, it's different. It's just Harry's name or everyone's name. There's no school. But I'm like, but then how is it? This is the worst method to do this. There is nothing that says you can't put someone else's name in for you. Right. So like, like Ron or not Ron, I'm sorry. Fred and George could have just found a seventh year. And like, if they had enough money, which they don't, if they had enough money, they could have been like, Hey, can you just put my name in when you're going, putting yours in? Angelina Johnson is putting her name in. Just be like, can you throw these in as well? Yeah. That's like the obvious back to you. That's such, it's such an obvious miss that it's like, and, Anyone could have asked someone older than them to do it. Yeah. But just the fact that it's like you have to put your name and school. I'm like, well, it obviously, if you're having to write down the name of the school, which makes sense because then the Goblet of Fire is like, okay, one from Durmstrang, one from Hogwarts, one from Bobatons, and then one from Clay Magnet High School. <laughs> like, I just am like, <laughs> how? <laughs> You would see it. It would say Harry Potter, different school. Like, and then Dumbledore would be like, oh, obviously that's what happened. So that, that really bumped me. I had a really hard time with that. Anyway, we can find out later. You didn't didn't like calculate an Excel spreadsheet for this thing to be like, (laughs) here are the rules of like how the goblet needs to work. Like, come, let's do a little bit of like work. 
on the forefront before we just send people to their deaths on the end. Okay. I will say though, the fact that they brought it forward in that casket, I do buy the, your, your theory that the, the goblet of fire has been like a part of this, the, the, the uh, tradition. champion choosing ceremony for however many years. Cause it does sound like, you know, it was like there at the ready. It had been sitting in storage waiting for this moment. Right. The goblet of fire and the sorting hat just like keep each other company <laughs> while yeah. they're not doing yeah. anything for years. <laughs> well, sorting and hat a year, the goblet of fire for years. <laughs> like, literally years. Um, uh, so then Dumbledore also explains the the age line around the Goblet of Fire and how supposedly no one younger than 17 can cross. And I was like, okay. Fine. Fine. And then he starts going into the magical contract of it all with the Goblet of Fire. And I was like, great. I let's poke. I no, let's I poke can't. at this a little oh, bit. This is so stupid. How? No one signed anything. No one's like blood went into the goblet. Like you're telling me that like writing your name on a piece of paper. Like, okay. So for example, if Harry didn't compete in the competition, he didn't put his name in the goblet of fire. So Barty Crouch Jr. over here, he's the one that's under contract, not Harry. Also, what's the contract? Like, what yeah, is the uh, clause that what happens uh, if someone says no? This was so weird to me. I was I, like, you okay, can't just say that and expect us to be like, oh, okay. it, <laughs> If you're reading it with, like, the best of intent, I guess, the only thing I, I could think is that, like, he's saying if your name is selected and you end up giving up, your school does not get to choose another champion in your place. That's like the best reading I can. I don't know. This is like the yeah, best reading yeah. I can give this. That makes but the like, most sense as mm. to why he's like, this is the warning. It's like, you obviously have a lot of loyalty to whatever school you go to in this situation. So like, make sure you actually want to do this because if you get chosen, da, 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 blah, 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 then your school will lose out. Fine. Yeah. It doesn't make sense that like, then they make Harry do it because we don't understand what the repercussions are. And uh, yeah, and that I remember even the first time I read this book as a kid having yes. that question like the yes. whole time, like just being like, so why because is I was Dumbledore- a nervous child. So I was, of course, like, how do I <laughs> not do let- this? Yeah. And I not why- participate. <laughs> why are they letting, why is Dumbledore of all people just like, okay, with letting him compete in this tournament? How did they like- get a fourth dragon so quickly? <laughs> the real question. The real question. Literally the first task is in like a month. I don't <laughs> I can't know. Remember. I, can't, I can't remember how quickly it happens. Uh, it's definitely before the Yule Ball, which is at like Christmas. Yeah, Christmas time. And this is and Halloween. Is yeah. Ha- which like, how do we get there that quick? Do you know what I'm saying? Halloween yeah. takes a while to hit for when you're in school. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> So yeah, I the magical the ba- the binding magical contract. I'm not buying it. She loves uh, to. She uses this multiple times in this book series, but never explains what happens if you break the magical binding contract. Yeah, and she does this with the like one that Narcissa and Snape do too, and you never actually yep. know what happens if what you happens? break it. You die. I'm assuming die, but like yeah, it's you just not- die. You <laughs> die on the spot. Yeah, like you die on the spot. I don't know. It's dumb. Uh, or the like secret keeper. Like we never know what that magical right, binding what contract to them. is. Like, what? None yeah. of this is explained and I need something to be like, oh, okay. So that's why yeah. there are stakes. Because you're not presenting what the stakes are. The only situation where you're something just saying like Harry that- has to do this because, because you said. Because his name popped out. Girl, so did my Pop-Tarts out of my fucking toaster oven. That doesn't mean anything. (laughs) Yeah, so did my (laughs) Pop-Tart. So stupid. Dang it, now I want a Pop-Tart. Dumbledore dismisses everyone. And then once again, Ron really wants to know where Crumb is going to sleep. Ron really wants to sleep with crumb ron is adam in this moment listeners Mm -hmm. adam is just trying to figure out how to get crumb into his bunk uh as they're leaving karkaroff 
sees Harry and freaks out. Like, this was a very strong reaction. I was like, oh, it literally is like a, <gasps> like that big in front of everyone. Yeah. It wasn't like a subtle, like, oh shit, you know? And then Moody pops out and it's like, yeah, that's Harry Potter. What are you going to do about it? To which Karkaroff is like, you. And Moody's like, me. <laughs> and then, and then that's it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then they this, and then they go their separate ways. This doesn't he work stops for blocking me. the. <laughs> I don't care about it's Karkaroff. Just, it's another. It's another red herring, right? It's just him. It's another red being herring. Like, oh, it could be him. Which fine, I like, get it. They won't. They won't eater. buy that it's Snape this time. They won't buy it. <laughs> yeah, I've done we this need now someone else. Three books in a row. They will not believe that it's Snape. <laughs> I need another Death Eater who was a terrible person, but also isn't as terrible as we think they are, but actually is because they were a Death Eater. Like, right. But also, you like, know what I'm my frustration with the whole Karkaroff thing is you never end up finding out more information about who he was or like what he did or like how close he was. Like, uh, he just, you kinda, I don't know. You kind of do. You kind of do. Okay. Remember the pensive? Yeah, I remember that. I just mean like okay. in the books going forward when she brings oh, yeah. all the Death Eaters back. Like it's not like Karkaroff comes back. Well, he gets murdered by Lord Voldemort. Or by book? another Death Eater. No, in, in book five. I'm pretty sure they oh, find in five? him murdered. They Whoa. find him like murdered. Oh five? my God, I'll bleep all of it. Five or six. But they at, it, at one point after Voldemort returns... He like runs away, like just like leaves Wild. Durmstrang, and then he's found like murdered in like a cupboard or something. It's it's kind of under dark. the stairs. Yeah, Harry's cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, he like goes into hiding, and they of course find him. <clears throat> uh. So then they they're off to bed, and uh, then the next morning they come down, and they're kind of ask, you know, interested in what's going on and if anyone put their their name in the Goblet of Fire yet or what's, you know, what's what's the buzz. And I just would like to say that the third year girl, um, that was actually my line in this movie because famously I was in this, this film as well. <laughs> and it was cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to find a line in every book. <laughs> this, was, this was my line. This was my line. I it's so this. weird. It wasn't. It was this weird too at all, Adam. That it was like Ron asked a third year girl. I was like, <laughs> Why don't you just have Neville there? Why don't you have Ernie McMillan chilling? Hannah Abbott. Anyone? What does he ask her? What does he ask he's her? Just like he's like. Uh, let me find the exact line. He's just like. I must anyone? have been skimming at this part because I was like, I don't oh, know okay. what you're talking about right now. Uh. Anyone put their name in yet? Ron asked a third year girl eagerly. All the Durmstrang lot, she replied, but I haven't oh, seen anyone yes. from Hogwarts yet. I'm s make that literally anyone with a name. Anyone from the Quidditch team. Yeah. It was just weird that it's like, Ron asked a third year girl eagerly. <laughs> I don't know. I just did. I was like, Is this supposed why? to be Luna? No. Well, I let's can tell you canon. it's not. It's canon. It's Luna. <laughs> <laughs> but then she would have described her as like we being know, a weirdo or something. I so I don't know. Literally anyone. He could have asked anyone else. Uh, Justin so Finch then, Fletchley right there. Best name in the series. Anyone! Right there. <laughs> uh, at that moment, the twins and Lee rush in and they've taken a, an aging potion. They're all excited. Yeah. It doesn't work. As Hermione uh, said, it wouldn't. It obviously doesn't work. Uh, the two twins grow beards. And uh, and then Dumbledore comes in and he kind of gets a, a nice little chuckle out of it. Which, like, sure. that is. I think that's exactly how he would react. He would be like, mm -hmm. well, I did tell you. <laughs> Your beards are very nice, though. Right. It's not uh, anything dangerous. 
No, which I never. I'm I causing think work for my staff. Which, if I was Madame Pomfrey, I'd be like, "Can yeah. you didn't? You, there was no other way to do this. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Albus." <laughs> Hopefully, she just Am gives them a like raise? a tonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she deserves a raise. Give her one. Uh, and then Angelina enters, or en- enters the Great Hall after putting her name in the Goblet of Fire, and then and I remember really kind of wanting Angelina to be the champion when I read this book for the first time. I was like, oh, that'd and be this so is great treated if she could be like champion. they're like, who you? You put your name in? Is it? That's the way it read to me. Oh, he okay. was like, you did. I was like, oh, you're seventeen then. <laughs> that's how you read it yeah mm. like, okay oh, okay that Fuck wasn't off. how i mean i'm i'm listening to the audiobook so that wasn't how he read it they were all very on her on her side mm. uh, but that's funny that you read it that way. <laughs> maybe that's how she wrote it it's just, a wouldn't girl it, wouldn't it have been fun if it was two girls and two boys fun if it wasn't the single female character that also did very poorly because you know she's competing with with men here she's competing <laughs> with boys so uh our after this our trio plans to go see hagrid and hermione gets all excited because she hasn't asked hagrid to join spew yet uh and then after they well when they're leaving they see madame maxime in the bobatons like very very uh, Von Trapp children introducing themselves, mm. but it's the Bobaton students putting their Diesel. name in the Goblet of Fire. Free Jake. Louisa. <laughs> Brigitte. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they all put their names in, and then Ron's like, what do you think is going to happen if they if they don't get picked? And they're like, well, they're going to stay here because she's staying here. So they're going to stay with her. And now I'm really thinking, are there really only like 13 students at Bobatons? <laughs> well, this is what I was trying I'm to like, figure out because I was like, are they, did they all put their names in? Is it all 13 put their names in? So this is just the oldest students who could go are the right. ones who were chosen to go to Hogwarts. Right. It does sound like everyone put their name in. So but then is Madame Maxime like teaching them or are they like getting taught also by the Hogwarts faculty? Like... There's a they have Zoom classes. Sure. Right. <laughs> Huge for Zoom carriage. at the time. Huge the for carriage. Zoom at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh they have so uh, the charcoal zoom where it's just the face in the flames. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, anyway, um, we're gonna be talking about charms today. <laughs> now I'm going to teach you. Dang, I can't do it over my now I'm now. <laughs> I just saw my face in. Je voudrais un charm. Je voudrais un charm. Comment comment dit on charm en en anglais? Comment dit on? I don't speak French, so I can't do it. Okay, and now now lift your wand hand. (laughs) See see. Hold on one second. See what I'm doing? (laughs) Oh no. Oh is my oh is my mic on? Oh I'm sorry. Oh no, Adam, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was like, oh no, we lost you there. <laughs> Adam's just such a good actor, guys. Can everyone you know? see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? <laughs> uh, is this okay? <laughs> is this all right? <laughs> you like bring the like rolling chalkboard into the fire with you? <laughs> Can everyone see the board? Can everyone see? <laughs> or like the projector from Defense gonna... Against the Dark Arts? <laughs> I just, so, um, I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to... Uh, I'll just start. <laughs> Adam can't do it. <laughs> so if, if we, we look up here... Into- if we just look, just look right above. Um, so we're going to talk right about the uh, star chart today. <laughs> Oh my god, so, oh my god. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, they're walking down to see Hagrid, and Ron is once again very interested in where now the Bobaton students are sleeping. And I was like, okay, this Ron, this is a little creepy at this point. 
I'm sorry. This is a 14 year old boy. So we know what he's thinking about. And there's that. It's what Adam uh, is thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then they arrive at Hagrid's hut. And Hagrid looks different. Yes. Uh, he has undergone a change uh, to which Hermione is the first one to notice and just decides not to say anything. She doesn't say anything. As she notices, she notices that Ron is about to say something and she's kind of like, uh, no, no. Just once again, uh, uh, Hermione doing the emotional labor for everyone. <laughs> Hermione's keeping the peace between everyone. Uh, and then Hagrid mentions that the Scroots are killing each other now, to which they're like, oh, oh, darn. Oh, my oh, God, just- and you don't say. Oh, Karen. Lord. Well, that would be <laughs> awful if they all died. Oh, well, that's too bad. Oh, that's too <laughs> bad there. Oh, you know, uh, I know you spent, <laughs> yeah, no. spent yeah, a no. pretty penny on those uh, scroots there. <clears throat> and Hagrid misses the sarcasm, of course, because he's very, you know, excited that he still has some scroots left. 20, to be exact. This How many did he have in the second time first we're place? referencing scroots in this fucking chapter? If if twenty, if this now there are only twenty the left, payoff. this is not worth the payoff. <laughs> Proportional response. <laughs> uh, yeah, did she was she like, oh, the scroots? People are gonna love the scroots. Like, what is going Had on in her be. head? <laughs> I mean, I, I will say it. there is a there is a blast and it's scroot on the Hagrid's motorbike adventure ride at an animatronic scroot, so you get to oh, see one well, live that in was, person. That was the whole reason she was like, when yeah. we make a theme park, when we yeah. make this theme park one day, there will be a scroot. And it blows <laughs> flames out of its ass at you. So that's fun. Oh, uh, no. So, I mean, they're, they're blast ended. I know, they're, but like they're blast the whole. Yes. Ended. <laughs> that's the whole point of the, the animal. It's terrible. <sighs> Hagrid is also very excited about the tournament. Um, as she, she literally says he was just excited as them. And he's like, just wait. You're going to see all these things that you've never seen before. And they're like, tell us, tell us. And he's like, no, I don't want to. No spoilers. No spoilers. Um, and he's then just like eating- this podcast. There's never yeah. nary a spoiler. Nary a spoiler. <laughs> it's actually the, the one time that Hagrid doesn't like accidentally give yeah. something away. Or purposely gives something And away. then he still does like in two more yeah, chapters. So. To hear, yeah, right. <laughs> just not yet. Not quite yeah. yet. Not quite yet. Uh, and then they eat this casserole that Hagrid made to which Hermione finds a talon inside it. And I was like, what is that implying? What is that? What are we supposed to take away from that? That he made like some random creature stew? Are we supposed to think it's a blast ended scroot? What is going on? I don't like it. I was like, I'm a really picky eater and I'm really specific about I'm a picky eater because of texture related things. Like I really don't like certain textures. Yeah. Um, and so this moment was like a, I had a very visceral reaction. I was like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, and then Hermione wants to talk to Hagrid <clears throat> about spew to which he very much rejects immediately yeah pretty pretty hard like pretty just like no it's a no from me yeah and i don't know i understand that we're still going with the idea of like the wizarding community just is like no that's just what they like to do blah 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 once again i still don't like it but i was like would hagrid with everything that we know about hagrid would he be like, yeah, whatever? I mean, maybe. Like, obviously, anyone can have their own prejudice or, or their own like internalized ideals. I wasn't. I wasn't annoyed by it until he was like, um, he did the like, uh, what does he say? Where he's like, oh, there's weird, there's weirdos in every group, and I was like, why? Here we go again. <laughs> It's just she, like, is making every argument for having them enslaved and making no arguments in this book for, like, the dissolution of their slavery. 
None at all. Not a single <sighs> argument. It's very in favor of what Hermione is saying. Yeah. It's very weird. Uh, so then Hagrid like goes on. They're like, we should walk back up to the castle, oh, and he's like, okay, just a second. Plot line. Yeah, I guess. I almost I wish that like she'd introduce Winky, and then like there's stuff that happens with Winky in the book. Everything that happens happens, but like. I almost wish she had just not done the spew thing in totality, even though that would have meant Hermione doesn't have anything to do in this book only because it's so frustrating that like the way she's treated is so like, this is such a bullshit waste of time. Like it's so yes. frustrating the way it's written and that we're not, we're not supposed to be on Hermione's side. Like she does not write it. No, For it's the not written number, that way. No, mm-hmm. not at all. And it's very annoying. <laughs> I just you wish said she had, in- like not done it. Ugh. Because I remember when I read these books, even when I, when, what, I would have been in third or fourth, third grade when this book came out. I think we talked about that. And, like, I was very much on Hermione's side and, like, couldn't understand why everyone was annoyed with her. But you said that at that age, you were like, why are we talking about spew? Like, you were just kind of like, why are we? Yeah. Why are we talking was, about this? Yeah. You, I mean, it was taking like, away from the. Because it, like, slows the plot. And it doesn't get any, it doesn't go anywhere. No. Nothing changes. Nothing Spoiler. changes. But it also <laughs> doesn't even feel like she's trying to write in a plot line to be like, look at the cynicism of like. That like, is the my biggest complaint. That right there. That it's just so clear that she wasn't even aware. Like it's not intentionally. Nothing is intentionally done. Yeah. Because if it was like she end. wrote it to be like, oh, nothing. Change doesn't happen this swiftly. And it takes like generations to like act against something so oppressive and blah, blah, blah. Like, fine, but that's also not, that doesn't feel like what she's trying to do either. And I don't know no, if whatever no, she said post this book series, but like, I don't believe, I just believe she wrote it to be like, well, Hermione needs something to do in this book and I'm sure she would be mad that there are house elves because... And Winky, Winky needs to be included in this book as it goes on. So Right. We need to come back to Winky because we have to yeah. find more information from her. Right. Right. <clears throat> and there's no other possible way to do it. <laughs> have to have Winky there. Uh, he literally, Barty Crouch comes to the school. He could have just never fired Winky. Maybe she's treated less well, but like she would be back around the school for them to see her again. Like we didn't need. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> I mean, I guess because. Well, I won't even get into that. I have a theory about that, but I'll wait till we get to a part where I can mention that. Uh, <clears throat> after their lunch that they don't really eat, they get ready mm-hmm. to go back up to the castle. And then Hagrid's like, let me put on some aftershave, to which Hermione's like, what? <laughs> what is that? And he's like, oh, it's too much. Okay, let me wash it off in the bucket of water or barrel of water outside. Yes, the same bucket of water that he dip, he sunk his whole head into, I think, book three or book two. Right, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. okay, does poor Hagrid, does he not have a bathtub? What's going on here? No, there's no way. But then Adam. He's like in a one-room shack. But where does he use the prefect's bathroom? How does he bathe? This man has to bathe. How do any of these students bathe? We don't know where the only yeah, bathroom we, we learn about is Moaning Myrtle's prefect. toilet and fucking the prefect's baths. The Everyone else the is just walking around the stank ass <laughs> with no haircuts. No haircuts. Stank no shower. Ass. No haircuts. Yeah. Oh they all gosh. go down to I the. I mean, well, who does the their lake laundry? Lake. Like how do they so like the the house elves are doing their laundry for them at night? Like, do you know there's so many questions I have? What is the so infrastructure? Build back better Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh as they're waiting for Hagrid to come back in, Madame Maxime comes out of her carriage and then Hagrid dishes them and walks up with her. <laughs> sure does. And you know what? Good for him. <laughs> I liked it. I was like, yeah, you leave their asses in the dust, Hagrid. This man, this man is <sighs> like 50 something. Like, yeah. And this is the you, first time he's met someone that he could possibly be with. Yeah. 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 Let them be together. 
Give give him this some whole, time. This whole plot line is wild too, but we'll get into it later. Yeah, yeah. There'll be a whole chapter about just them. We can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I think it is it right when they get back. Yeah, because it's Halloween. Mm-hmm. So like hollow Halloween Eve. Halloween. Hallo- all Hallows Eve. Halloween Eve. <laughs> All Hallows Eve, uh, the Goblet of Fire. She's gonna, she's gonna do her thing and skedaddle. Ooh, she's, she's ready. She's gonna, she's gonna blow. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> no, this uh, is so Halloween. Ha- Halloween. It's Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, All Hallows Eve. Oh yeah, All Hallows Eve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All Hall, not Halloween Eve or Eve of Halloween. Eve, yeah. Like Christmas yeah, Eve. Yeah. yeah. All Hall. That's why I was like Hallows Eve, Halloween Eve. All Hallows Eve. All of uh, the Hallows and their Eves. <laughs> every Hallow, every Eve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so yes, it is her time. It is her time to shine. She is mm-hmm. ready. It's her time uh, of the month. We're back to period <laughs> jokes. No. Uh, <laughs> To no one's surprise, Victor Crumb is selected as champion from Durmstrang. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fleur Delacour is selected as the champion from Bobatons. And then Cedric Diggory is the chosen champion of Hogwarts. And I just had to say, yay, Hufflepuff. This is a Hufflepuff moment. I'm very excited. Hey, hey. We love to see it. Yes. Um, great so guy. then they great guy great guy um my, i always tell michael if his if he had a character from harry potter it would be cedric Diggory for sure uh he he cedric fleur and it's not Crum. Karkroff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah not Karkroff. sorry <laughs> i knew i knew you, th- you thought it would be but they all the champions go off to like whatever holding facility <laughs> the champions right. quarters i don't know mm-hmm. um and then dumbledore starts going on about you know well please cheer on your champion and get ready and blah 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 and uh, uh, i <laughs> you know <laughs> and out and because the goblet is like finale 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 <laughs> she's like you thought you saw the last you thought that was it? Surprise, bitch. Bet you thought you'd yeah. seen the last of me. <laughs> sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> was the cup. Why aren't there why isn't there one cup? <laughs> why isn't the Goblet of Fire <laughs> what you win at the end of the Triwizard Tournament? Because you win a Triwizard Cup. Why isn't it just the same cup? Yeah, why wouldn't it be the same thing? Why aren't why missed are there two opportunity. cups? Boo. Edit. Missed, when you missed leave the house in the morning, Joe, you gotta take one thing off. Miss Goblet herself is like, Encore, Encore. You didn't ask for it, but here it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Dumbledore catches the piece of paper that flies out of Miss Goblet, and he says, Harry Potter. End of chapter. Not Harry Potter, comma, Hogwarts, to be clear. Not Harry no. Potter, comma, uh, James Whitcomb Riley High School. <laughs> Neither Adams of High School. Right. John Adams High School. Right. I don't uh, remember what one. Which Harry is just Potter, George comma, Ilvermorny. Well, that wraps up this chapter. Next week, we'll be reading chapter 17 called The Four Champions. The try the quat the quatra wizard tournament. Ari, Adam, j'ai un review. I have a review. <gasps> Sacre bleu. That's all I know. <laughs> um. So this is from Tabby Matha. It says favorite HP podcast. She gave us five stars. One of the highlights of my week... Yes, very kind. One of the highlights of my week is listening and now watching on YouTube this podcast. They provide great commentary on each chapter with a modern lens while also making me literally laugh out loud throughout the episode. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you, thank you. 
We love hearing what you guys think. You can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts, as well as video versions on the Ampliverse YouTube channel. As always, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so that we can get a perfect nude score. Five stars only, or else you'll have to, I don't know, deal with scroots more. I just like, I yeah. fuck <laughs> the scroots. Fuck them. Don't Fuck forget to groups. follow us on Twitter at HP Anxious, Instagram at HP Anxious, and YouTube at The Ampliverse. We are hosted on Anchor and recorded on Zencaster, so thank you to the both of them. And we are a proud member of The Ampliverse. Check them out at TheAmpliverse.com. Oh, and I want to say thank you, Ari. <laughs> You're so welcome, Adam. Oh, Lard. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> as always, uh, uh, screw, <laughs> <laughs> screw, <laughs> screw. <laughs>